I collected comics when I was young. And I wouldn't say I collected them. I read comics when I was read young. And I was something of a fan. But I'm not a fan boy. You know, I wouldn't qualify. I'm not a fanatic. Uh, and I didn't know much more than I knew about comics before I took on that subject. I think so. That's my, 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 my sort of the driving thing for me is to find a new area. Not so much a personal interest, more an intellectual curiosity. And I tend to be drawn to subjects I don't know much about or I feel like I don't know enough about. So it's kind of intellectual selfishness. I, I'm, look, I, I, I'm always trying to find something that represents a new opportunity for me to learn. So. Some of the issues at the heart of the Ten Cent Plague are timeless ones. Some of the issues are the same issues that Plato was struggling or dealing with in the Republic. What is the society's responsibility in relation to the influence of art on its on the on the public, particularly on young people? These are very old issues. Now, in the case of comics comic strips were controversial before comic books. Comic, when comic books became controversial, they were controversial for many of the same reasons. So we find some of the same issues emerging again in the video game debate. But throughout history, uh, each era has its nature of its own. And culture is a fluid changing thing. Times do change, people change, culture changes. And there is something different about the video game debate. And video games are, are interactive in a way that once, on one hand builds on the interactive quality of all literature. You know, We all relate to the protagonist in literature. There's an interactive quality to all literature. But there's something more going on when you can physically be the guy, the person in Grand Theft Auto. You could pull the trigger and kind of feel the murder or the killing or the tra other transgression mm -hmm. in a way that's more, where it's more visceral than uh, any, than the effect of any kind of art form to precede it. Now, what that means to me is not necessarily that this art represents a new danger, but rather that it's fulfilling its function and antagonizing and alienating the status quo, scaring the daylights out of the older generation. So above all, I think that's what video games have in common with taboo art or controversial art that preceded it. It's fulfilling its function of challenging the status quo and scaring the living bejesus out of grown-ups. Part of what we, we've seen from you know, Rambo, I don't mean Rambo, I mean Rambo. You know. uh, <laughs> from sixth century France, let's say, uh, to the present is, oh, long before sixth century French, let's say long before that, is what's radical in popular culture, what's daring and challenging about popular culture in time uh, becomes assimilated, absorbed by popular culture, becomes the mainstream, and then must be, will inevitably be challenged by the next generation. So that is a cycle, uh, and we do see that. But that doesn't mean that there's no progress in culture, because what's challenging at what at each phase, and what then becomes acceptable changes. And there is a kind of evolution that's really significant. You know, uh, one of the reasons that the story of the subject of my first book, Billy Strayhorn, was untold for so long was that uh, his identity 
uh, being African-American and uh, gay African-American and being out of the closet gay African-American was considered at one time a conspiracy of pathologies. <laughs> it was, you know, it's like three wrongs. <laughs> you know, uh, we now know better and we have different biases and different prejudices were, were affronted by different things today. So you know, even though there's a cyclical nature to this kind of challenge, assimilation, appropriation, there's progress.